Defection hits the APC as 5,000 members defect to the PDP in Cross River. And we're going to be talking about the civic and the civic space and the media. And of course, we'll be having guests in the studio to talk about it for 2023. It's Cross Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. The battle for the soul of Cross River State has continued to gather momentum as about 5,000 All Progressive Congress APC members have defected to the People's Democratic Party PDP in the Northern Senatorial District. One of the defectors and a former chapter treasurer of the APC in Obudu, Agim Joseph Agim, said they came back to the PDP because of the love for Senator Jairbe and to be part of the success story ahead of 2023. Joining us to discuss this is the PDP party chairman in Cross River State, Venatius Ikem. It's good to have you join us, Mr. Ikem. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here again. Great. Uh, let's start by looking at um, what's happening in the PDP. Now, we also know that the PDP has um, a governorship candidate who picked a woman as his running mate. Um, uh, many had said that uh, it would be a two-horse race, even though we've also seen defections from the PDP uh, into the Labour Party. Uh, but let's talk about these uh, defections. We know that this is a political season and a lot is happening. Um, what does this signal for the party going forward to 2023? Well, thank you again for having me. Uh, the PDP has to um we would like to think everybody knows that we are standing in the full position to win the next general election. Next five to general, forty to whatever it is they are protesting. Cross River State, as we keep saying, is PDP and PDP is Cross River State. It, 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 it's a surprise when sometimes uh, the news media sounds that uh, whatever is happening here now is a new development. It certainly is not. It's something we are used to and we take for granted. The reality is that the governor, IRD administration has so deceived everybody that down to his village, as was witnessed over the weekend, so many people took out to the camp from the party. There's actually nothing concrete on ground for anybody to celebrate. And so everybody is looking forward to next administration. It is a only alternative that we have on the scene, and like you said, of course, we can rightfully say it's going to be a two hundred rate because uh, of the presence of the governor and APC. Uh, otherwise, maybe we'll be talking about just PDP as it usually is. So, for us, uh, I think as a party, I can talk my chest and say that we, we did the right thing. We allowed democracy to prevail. People selected uh, the candidates of their choices across board. In some cases, people even won elections by one, just one vote, uh, two votes, three votes, eight votes, and all that. So you could see clearly that there was a demonstration of uh, political uh, absolute uh, freedom of choice. And so when you have that, usually, you will have candidates that have a popular appeal. And again, you may not, you will not have many people who feel disaffected by the process once it is free, fair, and transparent as they are. And so the momentum is quite high coming from the Congresses, and we are poised to win our elections at every level. Let me, let me, before we go to, you know, the elections proper and what to expect, let's talk about the role that the PDP has played in the state, because um, one, you complained about, you know, the governorship of, or the governance of um, Senator Ben Ayade. Uh, but the PDP has been in that state. Don't forget, he came from you before he defected to the APC. Uh, one would say that, um, or one would wonder how the PDP came up with a governor of this nature. And now you're saying because he's in the PDP, people are tired of him. But he did come from amongst you. And why should we trust that the PDP would be able to give us a governor who would not also turn out to be another Benayade? 
No, 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 no. Uh, you know, I had a with you rest there was a new recruit into the political process. Like whatever happens can. Uh, but I think the PDP has learned his lesson from his experience. The candidate of the PC is a grounded politician. He has been the chairman of council. He understands grassroots politics. He has been state chairman of the political party. He has served as commissioner. He, he has the intellectual progress to understand in between politics and uh, what matters. The, well, you could say also he is a professor of some sort. And then, um, also, he's also a senator authority. So we know the difference between people who happen by politics like uh, Don Oyade and people who have been grounded politicians like the candidate of the PDP, Professor Sandy Ono. Okay. Uh, if you're still there, I want to ask, again, the issue of zoning has come up over and over again for the PDP. Uh, the opposition, obviously, which is the sitting party, um, the APC, has produced a, a senator, somebody from uh, the Southern Senatorial District, which many have asked uh, for uh, a candidate from that zone, even though the PDP has said that um, it does not matter uh, and zoning should not be an issue. Um, and and th there's been that argument by your governorship candidate that zoning should not be the issue here, even though the state has, uh, many people in the state have said that you know, they would rather that they have power returned to the Southern Senatorial District. But I want again to hear uh, what the argument of the PDP is, being that your governorship candidate is not from the South. Ms. Akem, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I love to for some time, too. But I think I get the gist of what you're asking. Okay. Uh, Tomari of which is uh, zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, like you actually commented along the way there, you and I know that... Um, Zoning is actually not an issue. Yes, because the APC Cross River State has nothing to campaign on. They have tried to drum up the issue of zoning and elevated it to seem as if it's an issue. But I can assure you that on ground, people are more discerning than that. Uh, even if you want to talk about zoning, the truth is that in Cross River State, as you know, we have been able to, unlike some states, Transit to a point where every senatorial district has produced a governor for eight years. So the issue is not about anybody being uh, disallowed or zoning not being allowed. The issue was where next we start the next round. And I think there was, um, there has been a plethora of opinion across the board that suggested that we could start from anywhere, particularly as long as it's not from the zone that is holding the present governorship. And so between the central and south, it was an open field to contest. And then that, secondly, that has been the tradition in Kosovar State. That from day one, even His Excellency, the former governor, Donald Duke, came out to say he was not a product of Zulu. Senator Moke knows that he was not a product of Zulu. Because at every time and point, people from across the territorial district contested those primaries with them until they became governor, and it was taken that that zone had taken their turn. And I think that is common understanding across the country, except when politicians like the Fels, APC, and uh, their governor, Ayade, try to play off the issue of zoning to make it look as if. Uh, uh, it's an issue, and maybe in a desperate bid at least to have a, 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 a bit of uh, a hold on a part of the state, for instance, the southern territorial district, uh, pandering to, if you like, a, what seems like a populist opinion in this territory. But I can assure you that even in the southern territorial district, people are more aware than what it seems. Uh, you may find a few disgruntled persons. You may also find people who genuinely feel that, yes, ideally, we should go back and start from where uh, it started the first, the first round. But there's equally a strong opinion on ground that suggests that zoning is the material where you don't have a performance. For instance, the Northern Senatorial District is not smiling at all with the governor here being governor. So if you ask them, they can't see what they benefited by having a governor by way of zoning. 
Now, people are becoming more conscious and more aware politically than, than before. So, having a governor does not guarantee anything. But having a good governor can guarantee something. Okay. We can look back and say the years of Donald Trump were golden years, the years of uh, Moki were golden years, because you can count so many infrastructure projects across, and indeed they make George Washington proud. But where we are now, wherever you hear the mention of George Washington and governance, we sound like a joke. Because I, I hear they have come out publicly in the public television, in the news everywhere, to sound like a huge joke to every Nigerian, every descending Nigerian who listens to him. That's where we are. So, money has become the secondary issue as far as we are concerned in Kosovo of Africa. It's about good governance. Who can, from his pedigree, give us an indication that he's going to give us good governance. He's going to be a responsible governor that's going to be responsive to the wishes and aspirations of the people of Kosovo of Africa. That is the issue on the table now. Back to your candidate. Let's dissect into the man himself a bit. Uh, you said that Joe, oh, uh, you know, he's credible and he's he's been, uh, you know, around the corridors of power, so he might be um, the best hand. But um, th we also saw a little bit of infighting within the party as to uh, he being the flag bearer. But I mean, that's all said and done. He is now the flag bearer. What's the guarantee that he can deliver? Because again, I'm going back to the fact that you've called the Donald Duke and the Moke era a golden era. But there are those who might differ, uh, beg to differ, on the Moke, at, at the close of the Moke administration. A lot of things did not go right. And I, I go back again, emphasis on the fact that that situation threw up who we have today as a Benayadi. And it was sold to Kosovarians as the next best thing. So again, how certain are you that Kosovarians would want to trust the PDP, especially with somebody that they're not so certain Again, that might be the good person or the best man for the job. I mean, no, nobody really ever knows. But what does the PDP, what will the PDP be doing in terms of getting people to come onto their side, to believe in the candidate himself? I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful that you have a woman as, your, as his running mate, but is that enough to get the votes of the people of Cross River? Like you rightly said, the people are tired and they want something different. But does something different mean going back to the PDP? Well, yeah, to some extent. Sometimes, you know, we, we have a, an adage in our place that says, uh, uh, until a man marries to wife, we won't be able to know the difference. Uh, having tested the PDP, uh, despite all our complaints, and now seeing what the APC and the kind of governance uh, Governor Yadi has produced, I think people now know the difference. Uh, not due to no fault of ours, clearly there's no third party you can say can stand up to the two parties, so to speak. For PDP, because it's so grounded, for the APC, because they have the governor on their side and the so called power of the kingdom. That's what we're about to test right now. Like, is it about the will of the people or the power of the kingdom? For us in PDP, we know how grounded the party has been from day one. We know how our people believe in the PDP. And we know that we're going to vote PDP and we're going to win our election. Yeah, the challenge is made. Like, uh, even this all try to pick uh, 12 apostles, you know. And uh, among them was a Judas. There is no, Shakespeare would say there is no act to find a mind construction in the faith. And so what do we have? We look back at the pedigree of individuals. And like I said before, people like Professor Sandy, you know, or Senator Sandy, you know, they are household names in Cross the They have been in politics. They have been in grassroots politics as chairman of council. And when they left, they left with a very loud ovation. Now, that's something you can count on. You say, look, we have seen this man do in smaller roles. We know what he can do when he has a bigger role. We can at least um, take a risk with this one. Uh, I don't want to talk about the op 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 opposition, uh, opponent candidate, but clearly, the, the, the transition from grassroots to where they are, which experience both of them share, you can see clearly who can deliver on his mandate? And uh, given the background to what IAD has done to completely destroy Cross River State, 
it's, it's a no-brainer that you can make some efforts and make a whole lot of difference. That's where we are. Uh, yes, the PDP is challenged to the extent that we also have some learning to do or have some learning we have done and we hope that we are going to bring that to bear when we come at the next time. Uh, everybody is going back to the drawing board. Everybody is looking at what we didn't do right. And I can assure you that having a second chance, which is everybody's prayer in life, is a guarantee that we are going to improve on what we had before. That's why I think the hope in PDP is very strong. Um, I, I want to talk about the PDP's opposition, the playing of opposition in the party, because again, uh, many would say that the PDP has not necessarily been a very formidable opposition, uh, you know, under the Ayade administration. Um, uh, we've seen the PDP be muzzled out of its former um, party office, state uh, office secretariat. We've seen a lot of the PDP be muzzled out of using the stadium for its uh, political activities. We've seen yeah. a lot of things happen. But then what, what, what is of most importance for, to the people of Cross River is how has the PDP, how well has the PDP played its opposition politics in terms of speaking up for the people? Um, well, sorry to interject, but I, I don't think PDP is contest, competing to be an opposition, a successful but you opposition. Are, but, but, but the reality is that you're the opposition. Competing to get back but you are the government. opposition right now. In maybe the APC perfected the art of opposition, and maybe we should confine them to the business of opposition. We, as PDP, were not built to be an uh, opposition party. And we do not intend to play professional opposition. We intend so, to get back to government and get things done. So if they say we are not good in opposition party, we are to admit entirely. We are formed to form government. We want to be good in government. Not but while you're not in government, what about representing the voice of the people? Because that's what opposition parties do. I mean, so you sit quietly and wait until you get another, another chance at the, the, the governorship? Who is, is that who what is the PDP is doing? doing? Yeah, but I'm saying, in, in spite of that, if we are winning the hearts and minds of the people, then we need to re-examine what opposition policies means. It's not about uh, Lai Mohammed kind of opposition, uh, shouting humanities that they cannot deliver, uh, attempting to paint a picture of what is impossible as so as to win elections. If that is what they call effective opposition, no, we don't want to be there. Okay. What we are, what we are presenting is an alternative platform, and the idea is that when we had the platform, we did very well, and then moving forward, we're going to do even better. If that is not good opposition, so be it. But we are not about shouting and lying on, 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 on in the news to impress anybody that we are a good opposition party. We are working hard to get back to government, not to be good opposition party. Well. We wish you the best and we uh, look forward to uh, all your activities and how it plays out come 2023. Um, Thank you very much. Vanasha Zikem is the party chairman in Cross River State for the People's Democratic Party. Thank you so much for speaking with us. All right. Uh, thank you all for being here. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about 2023, the media space and, of course, civic education. How much synergy should there be? And are we making or taking advantage of it? Stay tuned. We'll be right back.